Can't sleep? Jesus, you scared me. Sorry. What are you doing here? I thought I'd check up on you. Why aren't you in bed? Your student's still here. He's up in your study. He can let himself out. I might as well wait until he's finished. He's not my student anymore. He's teaching now. Right, kid? What time is it? Almost one. Hmm. After midnight. So? So, uh, happy birthday. Dad. Do I ever forget? Thank you. Twenty-five. I can't believe it. Neither can I. Should we open it now? It's up to you. Yes. Do you uh, want me to? No, let me. The last time you opened a bottle of champagne out here, you broke a window. <laughs> That was a long time ago. I resent you bringing that up. You're lucky you didn't lose an eye. 25. I feel old. You're a kid. Glasses? Oh, god damn it, I forgot the glasses. Do you want me to come? No. <laughs> I hope you like it. I wasn't sure what to get you. This is the worst champagne I've ever tasted. I am proud to say that I know absolutely nothing about wines. I hate those people who are always talking about vintages. It's not even champagne. The bottle was the right shape. Great Lakes Vineyards? I didn't know they made wine in Wisconsin. A girl who drinks from the bottle really shouldn't complain. It's an elegant beverage. Sip. You want some? No, go ahead. Are you sure? It's your birthday. Happy birthday to me. What are you going to do on your birthday? Drink this. Here, have some. No. I hope you're not spending your birthday alone. I'm not alone. I don't count. Why not? Because I'm your old man. Go out with friends. Right. Your friends aren't taking you out? Nope. Why not? Because in order for your friends to take you out, generally you have to have friends. Oh. It's funny how it works that way. You have friends. What about that cute blonde? What was her name? What? She lives on Ellis Avenue. You used to spend every minute together. Cindy Jacobson? Cindy Jacobson! Dad, that was the third grade. Her family moved to Florida in 1983. What about Claire? She's not my friend. She's my sister. And she lives in New York. And I don't like her. <laughs> I thought she was coming in. Not till tomorrow. You want my advice, you find yourself awake late at night, sit down and do some mathematics. Please. We could do some together. No. Why not? Because I can't think of anything worse. Are you sure you don't want any? No. You used to love it. Not me. Don't waste your talent, Catherine. I knew you'd say something like that. I realize you had a difficult time. Thanks. That's no excuse. Don't be lazy. I haven't been lazy. I've been taking care of you. <sighs> okay. I've seen you, kid. You sleep till noon. You eat junk. You don't go to work. You know, and when you do go out, it's to buy magazines. You come back with a stack of magazines this high. I don't know how you read that crap. And those are the good days. Most days, you don't get up. You don't get out of bed. No. Those are the good days. Bullshit. Those days are lost. You threw them away. And you'll never know what else you threw away with them. The work you've lost, ideas you've never had, because you were moping around in bed until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. You know I'm right. I've lost a few days. How many? I don't know. Oh, I bet you do. What? I bet you can't. Knock it off. Well, do you know or don't you? I don't. Of course you do. How many days have you lost? A month. Around a month. Exactly. I don't know. How many? 33 days. Exactly. I don't. Be precise for Christ's sake. I slept on you today. All right. Let's call it 33 and a quarter days. Sure. You're kidding. No. Great. Number. It's a depressing fucking number. Catherine, if every day you say you've lost for a year, it would be a very interesting fucking number. 33 and a quarter years is not interesting. 
Stop it. You know exactly what I mean. 1,729 weeks. 1,729. Great number. The smallest number expressible. Expressible is the sum of two cubes in two different ways. 12 cubed plus 1 cube equals 1,729. And 10 cubed plus 9 cubed. Thank you. You've got it. You see, even your depression is mathematical. You've got to just stop moping around and get to work. I have The kind of potential that you have. I haven't done anything good. I'm young. You've got time. By the time you were my age, you were famous. <coughs> By the time I was your age, I had already done my best work. And what about after? After what? After you got sick. What about it? Well, you couldn't work then. No, if anything, I was sharper. Yeah. No, it's true. The clarity, that was the thing. No doubts. I knew what I wanted to do, and I did it. If I wanted to work on a problem all day long, I did. If I wanted to look for secrets, complex and tantalizing messages, I could find them all around me. In the air, in the pile of leaves some neighbor had raked together, box scores in the paper, steam rising up off a cup of coffee. If I just wanted to sit quietly and close my eyes and listen to the messages. I did that. It was wonderful. How old were you when it started? 23. 24. Is that what you're worried about? I've thought about it. Just turning a year older means nothing, Catherine. It's not just turning a year older. It's me. not keeping up with the medical literature. There are all kinds of factors. It's not simply something you inherit. Just because I went bug house doesn't mean you will. Yeah. Listen to me. Life changes fast in your early 20s, and it shakes you up. You're, you're feeling down. You've had a bad week. You've had a terrible couple of years. No one understands that better than me. Yes, I promise you. Get the machinery going again, and you will be fine. The fact that we can talk about this together is a good sign. A good sign? A good sign, yes. How can it be a good sign? Because crazy people don't sit around wondering if they're nuts. They don't. No, they've got better things to do with their time. Trust me, a good sign that you're crazy is an inability to ask yourself the question, am I crazy? Even if the answer is yes. Crazy people don't ask, you see? Yes. So if you're asking. I'm not. But if you were, it would be a good sign. A good sign. A good sign that you're fine. Right. You see, you've just got to work these things through. Now what do you say? No. You go up to bed. Get yourself to sleep, and then tomorrow we No, can... wait. What's wrong? It doesn't work. Why not? Because it doesn't make sense. Sure does. No. What's the problem? The problem is that you are crazy. What difference does that make? <laughs> you admitted it. You just told me that you were. So? You said a crazy person would never admit that. Well, I... Uh... <laughs> so? It's a point. Well, then how can you admit it? Well, because I'm also dead, aren't I? You died last week. Heart failure. Quick. Funerals tomorrow. And that's why Claire's flying in. Yes. You're sitting here. You're giving me advice. You brought me champagne. Yes. Which means? For you? Yes. Catherine, my daughter, who I love very much. Could be a bad sign.
God, did I wake you? What? Were you asleep? No, you just scared me for Christ's sakes. What are you doing? Sorry, I didn't realize how late it got. I'm done for the night. Good. Drinking alone? Yes. Champagne, huh? Yes. Celebrating? No, I just like champagne. Oh. It, it's festive. What? It's festive. <laughs> Do you want some? Sure. I'm finished. You can take the rest with you. Oh, no thanks. No, I'm done. Take it. Um, no, no, I really shouldn't. I'm, <laughs> I'm driving. Well, I can show myself out. Good. When should I come back? Come back? Yeah, I'm nowhere near finished. You've had three days. Nah, I'd love to get in some more time up there. How much time do you need? Another week, at least. You're kidding. No. Do you know how much stuff is up there? A week? Look, now, I know you don't need anybody in your hair right now. Now, I've got everything sorted out. It's mostly notebooks. He dated them all. But now that I have everything organized, I don't need to work here. I could take some stuff home. No. Bring it, bring it. No, I'll be careful. No, my father wouldn't want anything moved, and I don't want anything to leave this house. And then I should work here. I'll stay out of your way. You're wasting your time. But there's 103 notebooks up there. And I looked at them. It's nothing but garbage. Well, I'm prepared to read every page. Are you? No, I'm not crazy. Uh, well, I should get going. Some friends of mine are playing at a bar up on Diversy, way down the bill. Uh, they're going on around 2, 2.30. <laughs> I told them I'd be there. Great. They're all in the math department. Uh, you'd like them. They, they have this song called I, lowercase i, where, where they just stand there and don't play anything for three minutes. An imaginary number. <laughs> It's a math joke. You see why they're way down the bill? It's a long way to drive to see some nerds in a van. God, I hate it when people say that. It's not that long of a drive. <laughs> <laughs> so they are nerds. Oh, they're very geeks. But, but, you know, they're geeks who can dress themselves, hold down a job at a major university. Some of them switch from glasses to contacts. They play sports. They play in a band. They get laid surprisingly often. So, in that sense, they, they kind of make you question the whole set of terms. You know, geek, nerd, wonk, dweeb, Dilbert, face theater. You're in this band, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got me. I play the drums. Do you want to come? It's not that far away. And I never sing, I swear to God. No, All right. Catherine, Monday. What do you say? Don't you have a job? Oh, yeah. I I've got a full teaching mode this quarter, plus my own work. Plus, man. Look, you know, Catherine, I don't have enough time to do this, but I'm going to, if you'll let me. Now, I loved your dad. I don't believe that a mind like his can just shut down. No, he had lucid moments. He had a lucid year, a whole year, or four years ago. It wasn't a year. Uh, it was more like nine months. A school year. I was stalled on my PhD. He was advising students. I was this close to quitting, but he put me on the right track with my research. I owe him. I'm sorry. Look, let me, you're 25, right? How old are you? It doesn't matter. No, you listen, fuck you. How old are you? I'm 28, okay? The point is that when your dad was younger than both of us, he made contributions to three major fields. Game theory, algebraic geometry, and nonlinear operators. Now, most of us never even get our minds around one. N not to mention, he practically invented the mathematical techniques for studying rational behavior. <laughs> and he gave the astrophysicists plenty to work over too, okay? Don't lecture me. No, I'm not. I'm telling you that if I came up with one-tenth of the shit your dad came up with, then I could write my own ticket to any math department in the country. Give me a math. 
What? Give me your backpack. Why? I want to look inside. What? You're not taking anything out of this house. Though. I wouldn't do that. You're hoping to find something upstairs you can publish. Yeah, sure. Then you can write your own ticket. No, no, it, it, would, it would be under your dad's name, before your dad. I don't believe you. I know you have a notebook in that backpack. Oh, what are you talking about? Let me see. No, I think you're being a bit paranoid. Paranoid? Maybe a little. Look, fuck you, Hal. I know you have something in that backpack. No, I think you should just calm down and think about what you're saying. I'm saying that you're lying to me and stealing my family's property. No, didn't you just say there's nothing yes, else there? Yes, I did, but that's didn't not you say yes. That? Then what would I take? Right? So you don't need to come back tomorrow. Oh, please, no, someone should know for Look, sure whether... I spent my life with him. I fed him, talked to him, tried to listen when he talked, talked to people who weren't there, watched him shuffling around the house like a ghost, a very smelly ghost. I mean, he was filthy. I had to make sure he bathed my own father. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have just... <laughs> After my mother died, it was just me here. And I tried to keep him happy no matter what idiotic project he was working on. He used to read all the time, kept demanding more and more books. I took them out of the library by the carload until we had hundreds upstairs. And then I realized he wasn't reading. He thought that aliens were sending him messages in the Dewey Decimal numbers on the library books, and he was trying to work out the code. <laughs> what kind of messages? Beautiful mathematics, the most elegant proofs, perfect proofs, proofs like music. Sounds good. Plus, knock-knock jokes and fashion tips. I mean, he was nuts, all right? He was ill. It was a tragedy. <laughs> and then there came the writing phase. Scribbling away 19, 20 hours a day. <coughs> I bought him a case of notebooks, and he used every one. I had to drop out of school. I'm glad that he's dead. I, I, I understand why you feel that way. Fuck you. But you're right. I couldn't possibly imagine what that must have been like. I mean, it, it must have been awful. <coughs> Look, I know you... You don't know me. I want to be alone. I don't want him here. Him? I don't... You! I don't want you around. Why? Because he's dead. But I'm not. Look, he's dead, and I don't want any protégés around. There'll be others. What? Oh, you think I'm the only one? Now, people are already looking over his stuff. Now, someone's going to read those notebooks. I'll do it. No, you... No, he was my father. I'll do it. You can't. Why not? You don't have the math. I mean, it's all just squiggles on a page. You wouldn't know the good stuff from the junk. It's all junk. If it's not, we can't afford to miss any of it through carelessness. I know math. If there was anything up there, it would be pretty high order. It would take a professional to recognize it. I think I can recognize it. Catherine. What? I mean, I know your dad taught you some pretty basic stuff, but come on. You don't think I can do it? I'm sorry, but I know you couldn't. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, come on! This isn't an airport! Give me a break! <laughs> No, it's serious! 
basically like 20 minutes down to the club. We go on, we play, and we're awful, but we buy everybody drinks afterwards to make up for it. We, you'd be home by 4, 4.30 tops. Okay. Yes? Um, I Wait, you forgot your coat. Oh, no, you don't have to. You think I'm paranoid? No, just wait. You think I should go jogging? No, just wait a minute. Get out! Wait, let me explain. Get the I... fuck out of my house! No, can I please just... You I... stole this! Let me you explain. You stole it from me! You stole it from my father! I want to show you something. Give it... Calm down! Give it back! Just calm down. Call the police! Uh, don't! Look, I took the book, alright? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have taken it. I just picked it up before I came downstairs and I thought that I... Hello? I, I did it for a reason. Hello, police? Okay. I'd like to report a robbery in progress. No, you put the fucking phone down and listen to me. No, I found something. Something that your father wrote. Not mad. Something he wrote. I'm, yes, I'm at 5724 South. It's about you. You see? Kathy, there's your name right there. A good day. Some very good news from Kathy. No, I, I didn't know what that referred to, but I thought you might... Um, uh, four years ago, the, the handwriting is steady. It, it must have been during his remission. And there's more. The machinery is not yet working, but I am patient. The machinery is what he called his mind, his ability to do mathematics. I know that. I'm an auto mechanic who, after years of working on a greasy, hopeless wreck, has turned the ignition and hears a faint cough. Now, I'm not driving yet, but there is cause for optimism. Talking with students helps. So does being outside, eating in restaurants, riding on buses, all the activities of normal life. Most of all, Catherine. The years she had spent, I almost wrote, wasted caring for me, has certainly saved my life. Her refusal to let me be institutionalized, her keeping me at home, caring for me by herself, I don't know where her strength comes from. I can never repay her. Today is her birthday. She is 21. I am taking her out to dinner. Dated September 4th. That's tomorrow. You're right. I shouldn't have taken it. I'm sorry. Tomorrow I was doing it. sounds stupid now, but tomorrow I was going to wrap it. Happy birthday. Yeah, I'm gonna be needing to go shopping. Have a bagel. No, I 
<laughs> I, he really wanted to see you. He sends his love. I told him that you'd be seeing him soon enough. We're getting married. No shit. Yes, we just decided. Yikes. I know, yes. Huh. Um, when? January. Huh. We're not going to do a big, huge thing. This folks just City Hall and then a big dinner in our favorite restaurant with all our friends. And you, of course. You'll be in the wedding, won't you? Of course. Congratulations, Claire. I'm really happy for you. Thanks. Me too. We just decided it was time. His job is great. I just got promoted. Huh? So, you'll come then? Yeah, sure. In January. I mean, it's not like I can check my calendar or anything. Sure. That makes me so happy. So, how are you feeling? Okay. How are you feeling about everything with Dad? What about him? How are you feeling about his death? Are you, are you okay? Yes. I think in some ways it was the right time. If there ever is a right time for these things. Do you know what you want to do now? No. Do you want to stay here? I don't know. Do you want to go back to school? I haven't really thought about it. Yes, well, there's a lot to think about. How are you feeling? Physically, great. Except my hair, it seems a little unhealthy. I wish there was something that I could do about that. Come on, Catherine. What's the point of all these questions, Claire? Katie, some policemen came by while you were in the shower. Yeah? Yeah. They said they were um, checking up on things around here this morning. That was nice. Yeah. They said um, 
they responded to a call here at the house last night. Yeah. Did you call the police last night? Yes. Why? Because I thought the house was being robbed. But it wasn't. No, I changed my mind. So you call 911 with an emergency and then you hang up on them? Well, I didn't really want them to come here. Then why did you call? Because I was trying to get this guy out of the house. Who? One of Dad's students. Dad hasn't had any students for years. No, he was Dad's student. Now he's a mathematician. What was he doing here in the first place? He's been coming by to look through Dad's notebooks. In the middle of the night? It was late. I was waiting for him to finish, and last night I thought he might have been stealing them. Stealing the notebooks? Yes. So I told him to go. Was he stealing them? Yes. That's why I called the police. What is this man's name? How? Harold. Harold Dobbs. The police said you were the only one here. Well, he left by the time they got here. With the notebooks? No, Claire, don't be stupid. There are over a hundred notebooks. He was only stealing one of them. But he was stealing it to give it back to me, so I let him go play with his band on the north side. His band? Yeah, he wanted me to go with him, but I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> Is Harold Dobbs your boyfriend? No. Are you sleeping with him? No. God, he's a math geek. And he plays in a rock band? No, a marching band. He plays trombone. Yes, a rock band. What is the name of this band? I don't know. Harold Dobbs didn't tell you the name of his rock band? I don't know. Look it up in the paper. They were playing last night. They do a song called Imaginary Number that doesn't exist. OK, I'm just trying to understand. Is Harold Dobbs? Stop saying Harold Dobbs. Is this person? Harold Dobbs exists. I'm sure he does. Look, he's a mathematician at the University of Chicago. Call the fucking math department. Don't get upset. I'm just trying to figure out what happened. I mean, if you found out that some creepy grad student was here trying to steal some of Dad's papers and you called the police, I'd understand. Or if you were out here drinking and partying with your boyfriend, I'd understand. But. The two stories don't really go together. That's because you made up the boyfriend story. I was here alone. So Harold Dobbs wasn't here? No. Yes, he was here, but we weren't partying. You weren't drinking with him? No. This? Who's sitting right here? Who were you drinking champagne with? No one. Are you sure? Yes. The police said that you were abusive. They said they were that you were lucky they didn't haul you in. Those guys were assholes, Claire. They wouldn't go away. They wanted me to fill out some report. Were you abusive? And there was this one cop that whenever he talked, he just kept spitting on me. I mean, it was disgusting. Did you use the word dickhead? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Did you tell one cop to go fuck the other cop's mother? No. <laughs> That's what they said. Not with that phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you strike one of them? They were trying to come in the house. Oh my god. I mean, I might have pushed one of them a little. They said you were either drunk or disturbed. They wanted to come in here and search my house. You called them. But I didn't want them to come. But then they did come. And they started acting like they owned the place. I mean, pushing me around, calling me girly, smirking at me, laughing. They were assholes, all right? They seemed perfectly nice. I mean, they were off duty, and they took the kind of time to come back here after their shift was over and check up on you. They were very polite. Well, people are nicer to you. Katie, would you like to come to New York? Yes, in January. You could come sooner. You could stay with us. We'd love to have you. I don't want to. <sighs> Mitch has become an excellent chef. It's like his hobby now. <sighs> he buys all these gadgets. Garlic press, olive oil sprayer, every night something new. Delicious, wonderful meals. The other night, he made vegetarian chili. 
What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Come and stay with us for a while. It would be so much fun. I'm fine here. Chicago is dead. New York is so much more fun, you cannot believe it. Thanks, but the fun thing's not really where my focus is at the moment. I really think that New York would be a fun and safe Look, place. I don't need a safe place. I don't want to have any fun. I am perfectly fine here. Hey, you look tired. I think you could use some downtime. Downtime? Katie, please. Catherine? Who is that? Hi, I was just going to try to get Carol Dobbs! <laughs> Hi. You know, Claire, I really don't need this. I'm fine. I'm perfectly fine. And then you fly in here with all your questions and are you okay and your soothing tone of voice and oh, the poor policemen. I think the police can handle themselves, all right? And I mean, bagels and bananas and pojoba and come to New York and vegetarian chili. I mean, it really pisses me off, so just say it, all right? Hi, I'm Claire. <laughs> I have a sister. Nice to meet you. Oh, hi. hi. How? Uh, I, I hope it's not too early. I was just going to try to get some work done before the, uh, if, uh... Yeah, yeah sure. sure, whatever. <laughs> your, your sister's friends left hours ago. <laughs> the guys really appreciate being asked to participate. They worshipped your dad. It was Claire's idea. It was good. The performance of Imaginary Number was sort of moving. A good funeral. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, not good, but you know. It... No. Yeah. Can you believe how many people came? I was surprised. I think you would have liked it, your dad. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not my place no. to say. You're right. It turned out better than I thought. You look great. Claire got it for me. Oh, I like it. it doesn't really fit. No, Catherine. Really, it's good. No way to tell, really. Mathematicians are insane. <laughs> I, I went to this conference last fall in Toronto. I'm young, right? I'm in shape. I thought I could hang with the big boys. Wrong. <laughs> I've never been so exhausted in my life. 48 straight hours of partying, drinking, drugs, lectures, papers. Drugs. <laughs> yeah, and means mostly. I mean, I don't. Some of the older guys are pretty hooked. Really? <clears throat> yeah, they think they need it. Why? Uh, they think math's a young man's game. You know, the speed keeps them sharp. There's this fear that their creativity will peak around 23. 
and then it's all downhill from there. Once, once you hit 50, it's all over. We might as well teach high school. Depends <laughs> <laughs> what my father thought. I don't know. Some people stay prolific. But not men. No, you're right. The real original work is all the young guys. Mm. The young guys. No, young people. No, but it is men mostly. There are some women. Who? Uh, there's a there, there's a woman over at uh, Stanford. Uh, I can't remember her name. Sophie Germain. Yeah. Uh, I've probably seen her at meetings. I just don't think I've ever met her. She was born in Paris in 1776. <laughs> so I've definitely never met her. <laughs> a French Revolution was going on. She was trapped in her house. She had to stay in there for safety. So she passed the time reading in her father's study, the Greeks mostly. Then she tried to get a real education, but the universities didn't allow women. So she wrote letters. She wrote to gods. She used a man's name, um, Antoine, no, Auguste, Auguste LeBlanc, and sent him some proofs involving a certain kind of prime number. Important work. He was delighted to correspond with such a brilliant young man. Dad gave me a book on her. Oh, I'm so stupid! Sophie Germain, of course! Oh, you know her. Germain Primes! Right. They're famous. Double them. Add one, and you get another prime. Not like two. Two is prime. Plus, plus one. Double. No, no. Two is prime. Double plus one, and you get five. <laughs> also prime. Right. Or nineteen thousand three hundred five times two to the sixteen thousand nine hundred ninety-eight power plus one. Right. That's the biggest one. Well, the biggest one. No. Um, did, did he ever figure out who she was? Goss? Yeah. Later, a mutual friend told him that the brilliant young man was a woman, and he wrote to her, A taste for the mystery of numbers is extraordinarily rare, and when it comes from someone of the sex whom, according to our customs and prejudices, must encounter infinitely more difficulties than men to familiarize herself with those thorny researches, succeeds nevertheless in penetrating the most obscure depths, then truly without a doubt she must have the noblest courage, superior genius, and extraordinary talent. I memorized it. Uh, sorry, I'm a little drunk. It's okay. Look, I'm sorry about yesterday, about the work you're doing upstairs. Take as long as you need. No, you were fine. I was pushing. I was awful. No, m my timing was awful. I shouldn't have called the police. Yeah. <laughs> Besides, you're probably right. What? About it being junk. Oh, yeah. I, I read through a lot of stuff today, mostly just skimming, except for the book I stole. Oh, my God. No, I... no, no, you were right. The point is that that book, I'm, I'm sorry to think that it was the only lucid one, really, and there's no map. Nope. I mean, I I'll keep looking, but if I don't find anything in the next couple of days... Back to the drums? <sighs> yeah. And your own research? Such as it is. What's wrong with it? It's not exactly setting the world on fire. Oh, come on. No, it sucks. Basically. Harold. No. My papers get turned down. For the right reasons. My ideas are trivial. The, the big ideas just aren't there. It's not about big ideas. It's it work. You've got to chip away at problems. That's not what your dad did. I think it was, in a way. I mean, he come at a problem from the side, grind away at it, attack it. He was slogging, it's just that he was so much faster than everyone else that from the outside it looked magical. I don't know. I'm just guessing. 
Uh, and plus, the, the work was beautiful. I mean, you could read it for pleasure. It was just streamlined. No wasted movements. It's like, it's like a 95 mile per hour fastball. Just. And that's what you can never duplicate. At least I can't. It's okay. At some point, you just realize it's never going to happen. You readjust your expectations. I enjoy teaching. Have you tried speed? I hear it helps. <laughs> yeah. So, how? Yeah. What do you do for sex? What? At your conferences. Uh, I, um, we, uh. Isn't that why people hold conferences? Travel, room service, tax deductible sex, and big hotel beds? <coughs> uh, um, uh, maybe. I, I don't know. So, what do you do? All you guys. Well. Well, we are scientists. So? So? So there's a lot of experimentation. I see. Huh? That was nice. Really? Yes. Again? Yes. <laughs> I always liked you. You did. Not even before I met you. I, I'd see you visiting your father's office at school, and I thought, and I think, wow, I really want to talk to her. But then I said, no, no, you do not flirt with your doctoral advisor's daughter. Especially when your advisor's crazy. Especially then. Once, four years ago, remember? Sure. I can't believe you do. I, I was, I was dropping off a draft of my thesis for your dad. Jesus, I was nervous. You look nervous. I can't believe you remember that. I remember you. You seemed not boring. <laughs> Did I oversleep? Oh, no. How long have you been up? A while. <clears throat> Is your sister awake yet? No, I should probably get her off. Her flight leaves in a few hours. <laughs> no, don't. She was doing some pretty hardcore drinking last night with the theoretical physicists. I'll make her some coffee when she gets up. Sundays. I usually get up, get the paper, go get some breakfast. Okay. Did you want to come? Oh, <laughs> no, I should probably wait till Claire wakes up. Okay. You mind if I stay here? No, you can work if you want. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to? Want to. Do you want me to leave? Do you want me to leave? <clears throat> well, I want to stay here with you. I, I'd like to spend the day with you, if possible. Spend as much time with you as I can. Unless, of course, I'm coming on way too strong right now. In which case, I'll begin backpedaling immediately. Here. 
What's this? It's a key. Ah. <laughs> you should try it. Where? The bottom drawer of the desk in my dad's office. What's in there? Only one way to find out. Okay. Now? <laughs> Good morning. Oh, please don't yell, please. Are you all right? No. Those fucking physicists. What happened? Thanks a lot for leaving me all alone with them. Where were your friends? My stupid friends. Friends, they all left. It wasn't even 11 o'clock. They all had to get home and pay their babysitters or bake bread or something. I'm left alone with these lunatics. Well, why did you drink so much? I don't know. <laughs> I thought that I could keep up with them. I thought they would stop. They didn't. Oh, God. Oh, have another tequila. Do you want some coffee? In a minute. <clears throat> that band. Yeah, they were terrible. They were all right. They had fun. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, as long as everyone had fun. You're, you dress turned out all right. I love it. You do? Yeah, it was wonderful. Surprised you even wore it. I love it, Claire. Thanks. You're welcome. You're in a good mood. Should I not be? Are you kidding? No. I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm leaving in a few hours. I know. The house is a wreck. Don't clean it up yourself. I'll hire someone to come in. OK. Don't you want your coffee? No, it's really no trouble. Hold on a sec, Katie. I... I'm leaving soon. You said. I know. I'd still like to have you come to New York. Yes, in January. I... I'd like you to move to New York. Move. Would you think about it for me? You can stay with me and Mitch at first. And then when you get settled, you can get your own place. I've, I've already been scouting apartments for you, some really cute places. What would I do in New York? Well, what are you doing here? I live here. You, you could do whatever you wanted. You could work, you could go back to school. I don't know, Claire. This is pretty major. I realize that. I mean, to be honest, you were right yesterday. I do feel a little confused. I'm tired. It's been a pretty weird couple of years. I think I'd like to just take some time and figure things out. But you can do that in New York. And I can do that here. But it would be a lot easier for me to get you set up in an apartment in New York. And then I, I don't need an apartment. I'll just stay in the house. We're selling the house. What? We're... I'm selling it. When? I was hoping to get the paperwork done this week. I, I know it seems sudden. Who are you selling it to? There's been nobody by looking at the place. The university. They've wanted this block for years. I live here? Honey, now that Dad's gone, it doesn't make sense. The house is in bad shape. 
It, it costs a fortune to heat. It's time to let it go. Mitch agrees. You know, it's a very smart move. We're, we're lucky. We have a great offer. And where am I supposed to live? Come to New York. I don't believe this. It would be so good for you, Katie. You deserve a change. This could be a whole new adventure for you. No, why are you doing this? I want to help. By kicking me out of my house? It was my house, too. <laughs> you have not lived here for years. I know. You were on your own. I really regret that, Katie. Don't! I, I know I let you down. I feel awful about it, and now I want to help. You want to help now? Yes. Dad is dead. I know. He's dead, and now that he's dead, you fly in for the weekend and decide you want to help? You're late. Where have you been? I was... Where were you five years ago? You weren't helping then. I was working. I was here, living with him, alone. I was working 14-hour days. I paid every bill in this place. I paid off the mortgage on this three-bedroom house while I was living in a studio in Brooklyn. You had your life. You got to finish school. You could have stayed in school. Yeah. I, I told you I would have done anything. I told you a million times. I said, do whatever you wanted. And what about Dad? Somebody had to take care of him. Dad was ill. He should have been in a full-time professional care situation. He did not belong in a nut house. He might have been better off. How can you say that? Oh, okay. This is where I'm supposed to feel guilty, right? Sure. Go for it. I'm heartless. My own father. No, he needed to be here, in his own house, near the university, near everything that made him happy. Maybe. Or maybe some real professional care would have done him a lot more good than rattling around in this filthy house with you looking after him. I'm sorry, Katie. It wasn't your fault. It was my fault for letting you do it. No, I was right to keep him here. No! What about his remission four years ago? He was healthy for almost a year. Yeah, and then he went right back downhill again. Well, he might have been worse in a hospital. And he might have been better. Did, did he ever do any work again? No, but that's no! And you might have been better. Better than what? Living here with him didn't do you any good. You said that yourself. You think I'm like that? I think you have some of Dad's talent, and I think you have some of Dad's tendency toward instability. apartments that you've scouted for me in New York? Have you devoted any of your considerable energy towards scouting another type no. of living facility for your bug house little no. sister? No! No, absolutely not. That is not what this is about. Don't lie to me, Claire. I'm smarter than you. The resources that I've investigated... Oh my god. All I'm saying is, if you wanted to talk to somebody, the, the people in New York, the doctors there, they're, they're the best, Katie. Fuck you! It would be entirely up to you. I mean, you wouldn't live anywhere. I hate you. Please calm down. I hate you! What are you doing here? How long have you known about this? A while. Why didn't you tell me about it? I wasn't sure that I wanted to. Thank you. Welcome. What, what's going on? Oh, Captain, thank you. I thought you'd like to see it. What, what is it? It's, it's incredible. What is it? Oh, uh, it's, it's a result. A proof. I mean, I think it's a proof. I mean, it is a proof. A very long proof. And, uh, I haven't read all of it yet, of course, or even checked it. I, I don't even know if I could check it, but... If it is a proof of what I think it's a proof of, then 
It's a very important proof. What does it prove? Uh, uh, it proves a theorem. A mathematical theorem about prime numbers. Something mathematicians have been trying to prove since... Uh, well, well, since they were mathematicians, basically. Most people thought it couldn't be done. Where did you find it? In, in the study. Catherine told me about it. You know what this is? Yes. Is it good? Yes! It's historic! If it checks out. Well, what does it say? Uh, I don't know. I've only read the first few pages. Well, what does it mean? It means that while everybody thought your father was crazy or barely functioning, that, that he was doing some of the most important mathematical work in the world. If it checks out, it means you publish instantly. It means that newspapers all over the world are going to want to talk to the person who found this notebook. Kathy. Kathy. I didn't find it. Yes, you did. No. Well, did you find it or did Hal find it? Oh, I didn't find it. I didn't find it. I wrote it. Hello. How did you know I was here? I heard you. I thought you were asleep. On an afternoon like this? No. Do you need anything? No. I'm going to the store. What's for dinner? What do you want? Not spaghetti. Okay. Disgusting stuff. That's what I was going to make. I had a feeling. Like maybe too much. All right, then. What do you want? What do you have a taste for? Nothing. Nothing at all? Not really. I thought pasta would be easy. Oh, God. Pasta. You can't even say the word pasta. It sounds so hopeless. Like, surrender. Pasta would be easy. <laughs> yes, yes, it would. But it's, not, uh, it's one of those euphemisms people made up when they got sick of eating spaghetti. Dad, what do you want to eat? I don't know. Well, then I don't know what to get. I'll shop. No. No, I'll go. No. Dad, rest. I wanted to go to, for a walk to the lake anyway. You sure? Yes. We can take a walk to the lake, you and me, and then we'll stop at the store and see what jumps out at us. All right. It's warm. It'd be nice. We'd love to take a walk to the lake. Let me just clean up this mess. Give me about five seconds and we're out the door. Yeah. I'm going to school. And when? I'm going to start at Northwestern at the end of the month. Northwestern? Yes, they've been great about my credits. They're taking me as a sophomore. Northwestern. Yes, I wasn't sure when to talk to you about it. What's wrong with Chicago? You still teach there. I'm sorry, it's too weird taking classes in your apartment. It's a long drive. It's not that long, it's 30 minutes. Still twice a day. Dad, I live there. You really want to live in Edison? It's really close, and you've been well, really well, for seven months. I don't think you need me here every minute of the day. So this is a done deal you're in? Yes. You're sure? Yes. Who pays for it? They're giving me a free ride, Dad. They've been great. <coughs> a tuition? Sure, but what about books, food, classes, clothes, meals out? You planning on having a social life? I don't know. What about dates? You've got to pay for the early dates, the first three at least, otherwise they expect something. <laughs> <laughs> the money's going to be fine, Dad. Claire's helping out. When did you talk to Claire? A few weeks ago. She's been great. She said she's going to take care of all the expenses. So you talked to her before you talked to me. Look, there were a lot of details to work out. It's a big step, a different city. It's not even a long distance phone call. Still, it's a, it's a huge place. Sure, the football's a mess, but 
The math guys do not kid around. They are serious. Really serious. Are, are, are you sure? I mean, you haven't been in school. You could get married out there. I know. You're way behind. Thank you, I know. A year, at least. Look, I don't know if I can handle the work. I don't know if this is a good idea. I, I don't know about any of it. For Christ's sake, Catherine, why didn't you come and talk to me? There were a lot of details to work out, and until recently, until very recently, I didn't know. You just said I would be fine. Yes, but I didn't know. <laughs> I hoped, but I didn't know. I mean, nobody knew if this was going to last. And I told myself to wait until I knew you were okay again. Consistently okay. Great. So I have to take this conversation as a vote of confidence. Take it however you want. I knew that you'd get better. Well, thank you very much. Don't thank me. I had to. All right. That's enough, Catherine. Let's just stay on the subject, this shall we? This is the subject. There were library books upstairs, stacked to the ceiling. Do you remember that? When you were trying to decode messages from aliens? The fucking library books are gone. I brought them back myself. Why do you keep bringing up this argument? Them. 
You're on your way to a promising career. But before you know it, you'll be teaching younger, more irritating versions of yourself in no time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, Catherine is uh, in the math department at Northwestern. Oh, uh, uh, who are you working with? I'm just starting in the fall, undergrad. She's starting in uh, three weeks? A little more. There are a lot of good people at Northwestern. O'Donoghue, Minsky. Yes. They're going to work your ass off. I know. You're going to have to run pretty hard to catch up. I think I can do it. I know you can. You must be excited. I am. Uh, first year of school can be great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all, all the new people, new places, getting out of the house. Yeah. Uh, or no, I don't know. Oh, absolutely. Can't wait. I'll be glad to see the back of her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Maybe I wanted to have the house to myself. Or hadn't you considered that? It's awful how children sentimentalize their parents. It'd be good to get some peace and quiet around here. Oh, don't you worry. I'm going to be back. I'll be here every Sunday cooking up big vats of pasta in the last two weeks. <laughs> and I'll drive up to Evanston, strut around campus, and embarrass you in front of all of your classmates. Good. So we'll be in touch. Sure. If you get stuck with a problem, give me a call. All right. Same to you. Be sure to give me your phone number. I'm actually looking forward to getting some work done. <laughs> oh, what are you working on? Nothing. Nothing at the moment. Which I'm glad of, really. It's that time of year you don't want to be tied down to anything. You want to be outside. Love Chicago in September. Perfect skies, sailboats on the water, cubs losing. <laughs> All bookstores are busy. Arctic black blast off the lake reminds you of winter. <laughs> bookstores full, students coming back. Why, why was the bookstore yesterday? Students do a, a hell of a lot of browsing, don't they? Just, just browsing. Running about with their backpacks on, goofing off, taking up space. You call it loitering, except for every once in a while they open a book and flip through the pages. Browsing. <laughs> I admire it, really. It's an honest way to kill an afternoon. In the back of a used bookstore, flipping through some old record albums, seeing what somebody threw away, what they underlined. Not looking for anything, really. Just looking. Or maybe you find something great, like uh, like an old thriller from the 1940s with one of those painted covers. Or perhaps a textbook your professor used when he was a student. Name carefully written on the inside. Yeah, I like it. I like watching the students seeing what they're going to buy, what they're going to read, what kind of ideas they're going to come up with them when they finally settle down and get to work. You know, I haven't been doing much these days. It does get harder. It's a stereotype that happens to be true, unfortunately, for me. Unfortunately for you, for all of us. You might still get lucky. Ooh. I might. You might pick up where I left off. Don't hold your breath. Don't underestimate yourself. Anyway. Another drink? Kathy? Okay. How? Uh, thanks. Uh, I should really get going. Oh, are you sure? Yes. All right. Well, until then, don't worry about anything until I take a look at this dissertation, all right? You go ahead, have some fun, see some movies. <laughs> okay. Uh, when should I come by your office? Uh, why don't you stop by and say a week around... Uh, the 11th. Yes, that's... God. I'm 
sorry. You know what? I think 
everyone is tired, it's very early, and no one is in a state to make emotional decisions right now, so I think that we all just need to take a breath. You don't believe me. Catherine, I don't know. I don't know anything about this. No, forget it. I don't know why I expected you to believe me about anything. Well, could you tell us the proof? That would show that you wrote it. You wouldn't understand it. Well, tell it to have. We could talk it through. I mean, it'll take a while, but... You can't use the book. For God's sakes, Claire, I didn't memorize it. It's 40 pages long. It's not a muffin recipe. Look, this <laughs> is stupid. It's my book, my drawer, my key, my writing, my proof. How? Tell her! Tell her what? Whose book is that? I don't know. What's wrong with you? You've been looking at his other stuff. You know there's nothing even remotely like this up there. Look, Catherine, I... No, forget it. We'll sit down. We'll talk about the proof. If Claire will please let me have my book back! Fine. <laughs> I'm talking through it. Back to big days. And it still wouldn't show that she wrote it. Why not? He, he, he could have wrote it and then explained it to you later. Now, I, I'm not saying that he did. I'm just saying that, that there's no proof that you wrote this. Of course there isn't, but come on, he didn't do this. He couldn't. He didn't do math for years. Even in his good year, he couldn't work. You know that. You're supposed to be a scientist. I don't know. Okay. Here's my suggestion. I know three or four guys down at the department, very sharp, disinterested people, who knew your father, knew his work. Let me take this to them. No. No, we we sit down, I I tell them that I that we found something, something potentially major, and we're not sure about the authorship. Then we sit down, go through it carefully, and Good. then yeah. We would have a lot more information about it. It would probably only take a couple of days. No, I, I think that's an excellent suggestion. You can't take it. No, I, I, I wouldn't be taking it. This is exactly what you wanted. Oh, come on, Jesus. You don't waste any time, do you? No hesitation. You can't wait to show them your brilliant discovery. No, I'm trying to find out what this is. I'm telling you what it is. You don't know. I wrote it! It's your father's handwriting! Looks an awful lot like the writing in the other books. I'm not saying that it is. Your handwriting could be exactly the same as his. I don't know. It does look similar. I never showed this to anybody, and I could have, but I wanted you to be the first to see it. I didn't know I wanted that until last night. This is me. And I trusted you. I know. Was I wrong? No. I... I mean, I should have known that she wouldn't believe me, but why don't you? Catherine, it's in your father's book, the exact same kind that he used. I just used one of his blank books. There were extras. There aren't any extras in the study. Well, there were when I started. We just used the rest later. And the handwriting. You want to test my handwriting? No, it, it doesn't matter. I'm just, I'm just saying that it doesn't make sense. Why not? I'm a mathematician. So? So, I know how difficult it would be to come up with something like this. I mean, it, 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 it's impossible. You would have, you'd have to be your father. Your father at the, the peak of his powers. I'm a mathematician. Not like your dad. And he's the only one that could have done it. He's the only one that I know of. Are you sure? Catherine, your father was the most brilliant man that I ever met. I... Look, just because you and the other geeks worshipped him does not mean he wrote this proof out. He was the best. 
My generation hasn't produced anything like him. I mean, he, he revolutionized the field before he was 22. No, I'm sorry, Catherine, but you took some courses at Northwestern for a few months. My education was not at Northwestern. It was living in this house for 25 years. It doesn't matter. This is too advanced. I don't even understand most of it. It's too advanced. Yes. It's too advanced for you. You could not have done this work. And what if I did? Well, what if? It'd be a real shame, wouldn't it, for you and all the other geeks who barely finished their PhDs, marking their time doing lame research, writing about conferences they go to, wow, playing an awful band, and whining that they're intellectually past it in 28 because they are.
I'll give you my number in New York. You can call her there once she settled. That's it. That's the deal. Okay. I don't mean to be rude, but I have a lot to do. There's one more thing. And you're not going to like it. Sure, the notebook. I, I Hold on a sec. I'll get it for you. Working? It's December. It's 30 degrees. I know. Don't you need a coat? Don't you think I can make that assessment for myself? Well, aren't you cold? Of course I am. I'm freezing my ass off. So what are you doing out here? Thinking. Writing. You're gonna freeze. It's too hot in the house. The radiators dry out the air, and then there's the clanking. I can't get any work done. I have to come outside to cool off. Look, I'll turn off the radiators. They won't make any noise. Come inside. It isn't safe. I'm all right. I've been calling. Didn't you hear the phone? It's a distraction. I had to drive all the way down here to find out what was going on. I had no idea. Well, I'm sorry, Catherine. It's a question of priorities, and work takes Priority, you know that. You're working. God damn it. I am working! I say I. The machinery is working. The machinery! All of the cylinders are firing. I'm on fire! I haven't felt like this for years! You're kidding! No! You don't believe it. I don't believe it either. It happened about a week ago. I woke up. Came downstairs to pour myself a cup of coffee, and before I could pour the milk in, it was like someone had turned the light on in my head. Really? Not just the light, the entire power grid. I lit up! It's like no time has passed since I was 21! I don't believe it. It's true. I'm in touch with the source, the thought, but whatever the source of my creativity was all those years ago, I'm in contact with it again. 
I'm on top of it. It's a geyser, and I'm shooting right up into the air on top of it. My god. I'm not talking about divine inspiration. It's not going to be easy to see these things. I'm not saying it won't be a tremendous amount of work. It will be a tremendous amount of work. It's not going to be easy, but the raw material is there. It's like, it's like I've been driving in traffic and all of the lanes are opening up before me and I can accelerate. I can see whole landscapes, places for the work to go, new techniques, revolutionary possibilities. I'm going to get whole branches of the profession talking to each other again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm being rude. How's school? It's fine. You're working hard? Of course. The professors are treating you all right? Yes, death. Make any friends? Yes, of course I have. Dating? Death. Hold on. I don't, I don't mean to be rude. I'm, I'm just interested. I, school is fine. I want to talk about you. All right. Let's talk. This work. Yes. Is it here? Some of it is, yes. May I see it? Well, it's all at a very early stage. I don't mind. Well, it's, it's still in progress, Captain. I, I think we're talking years. That's fine. I don't care. Just let me see anything. You really want to? Yes. You're genuinely interested? Dad, of course. Of course. Of course you are. It's your field. Yes. Yes. Well, I think there's enough work here to keep me busy for, for the rest of my life. Not just mine. I, I, I was beginning to think I was finished, you know. Really finished. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I, I was glad I had to go to work every day, go to my office, but secretly, secretly I was, I was terrified I'd never work again, did you know that? I wonder. I was absolutely fucking terrified. But then, but then something happened and part of the terror went away. I remembered you. Your creative years were just beginning. You were just getting started. You get your degree, do your own work. Now, if you hadn't gone into mathematics, that would have been all right. I'm satisfied with Claire. She's done well enough for herself, but I'm proud of you. I don't, I don't mean to embarrass you. Part of the reason we have children, we hope they'll survive us, accomplish what we can't. But now that I'm back in the game again, I have to admit, I've got another idea. A better one. What? I know you've got your work, and I don't want you to neglect that. You can't neglect that. But I could probably use some help. Work with me? If you want to. If you can work it out with your class schedule and everything, I, I can talk to your teachers, I, I, I can make some phone calls. I, I'm getting ahead of myself, I, I, I'm sorry. Enough bullshit. You said you wanted to see something. Let's start with this. I've roughed something out. General outline for a proof. Major result. Very important. Let's take a look. Yes. Here. It's all very rough still.
Con sabe. The gaps might make it hard to follow, but we can talk it through. Not right now. Come on inside. We could do some work together. This might be a great place to start. What do you say? What do you think? Let's talk it through. Not right now. I'm cold too. Let's go inside. Come on. Y yes, but I'm, I'm, I just said it. The radiator's got damn it. It's, it's too hot in there. No, 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 no. Look. Let's just, you just open the book and read me the first few lines. That's how we start. You read and we go line by line through the argument, trying to find a better way, a simpler way. Let's collaborate. No, come on. Look, I, I've been wanting to do this for years. This is something I want. Let's do some work together. We can't work outside. It's freezing cold. I'm taking you in. No, no, not until we talk about the proof. No. God damn it, Catherine! Open the goddamn book and read me the lies! Wonderful. Some magazine wrote it up. 
Manhattan's best. Who knows? But it is very good. Sounds good. You'll love it. Good. You look nice. Thanks. So do you. It's bright. Yes. It's one of the things I do miss. All the light and open space. You could sit out here all morning. It's not that warm. Are you cold? No, but I guess it has gotten a little chilly. I'm sorry, do you want to go in? No, that's fine. I just, I thought it would be nice to have one last quick, quick cup of coffee out here. It is. And plus the kitchen's all put away. But if you're cold, I'm not. Not really. Do I your jacket? Yeah, sure. Here. Thanks. It's that time of year again. Yeah, you can really feel it coming. You're all packed? Yes. If you forgot anything, it's really no big deal. The, the movers will send us everything at the end of the month. I know. I know this is hard. It's fine. I want to do everything I can to make this as smooth a transition as possible for you. So does Mitch. Good. The, the departure, that's the hardest part. Once we get there, we can relax, enjoy ourselves. I know. You're going to love New York. I can't wait. You're going to love it. It's, it's not like Chicago at all. It's, it's really alive. Yeah, I've read right about that. I really think you're going to feel so at home there. You know what I'm looking forward to? What? Seeing Broadway music. Well, Mitch can get us tickets to whatever you want to see. And Rockefeller Center in the winter, all the skaters. Yeah, well. And also, the many fine museums. I know this is hard. Listening to you say how hard it is for me is what's hard for me. Once you're there, you'll see all of the possibilities that are available to you. Restraints, lithium, electroshock, schools. You know, in the New York City area alone, there's, there's NYU, there's Columbia. Bright college days, football games, road trips, necking on the quad. All right, if that's not what you want, we can help you find a job. Mitch has terrific contacts all over town. Does he know anyone in the phone sex industry? <laughs> I am trying to make this as easy a transition for you as I can. Oh, it's going to be easy, Claire. It's going to be so fucking easy, you won't believe it. Thanks. I'm going to sit quietly on the plane to New York, and live quietly in my cute apartment, and answer Dr. von Heinrich's questions very politely. You can see any doctor you want, or you can see no doctor. No, I would like to see a doctor called Dr. Von Heimlich. Please find one. <laughs> and I want him to wear a monocle, and I would like him to have a very soft, very well-upholstered couch so that I can be perfectly comfortable while I'm blaming everything on you. <laughs> Stay here if you hate me so much. 
and do what? You're the genius. Figure it out. Talk to somebody. 
Here, at least take it, then I'll leave. I don't want it. Come on, Catherine, I'm trying to correct things. You can't. You run over here all impressed with yourself because you changed your mind. Now you're certain. You're so sloppy. I mean, look, the dates, the writing, the math, all that's just evidence, just some stuff you decided with your buddies. It doesn't prove anything. It doesn't finish the job. Okay. What would? Nothing. You should have trusted me. I don't. So, Claire sold the house? Yes. Now stay in Chicago. You're an adult. She wants me in New York. She wants to look after me. Do you mean looking after? She thinks I do. No, but, but, but you looked after your dad for five years. So, maybe it's my turn. I kick and I scream, but I don't know. Being taken care of doesn't sound so bad. I'm tired, and the house is a wreck. Let's face it, it was my father's house. Nice house. It's old. I guess. It's drafty as hell. The winters are rough. Now that's just Chicago. Either it's freezing inside or the steam's on full blast and you're stifling. Uh, I don't like it cold. It, it keeps you alert. Wait a few years. Nah, I've lived here all my life. Yeah? Sure. So have you. Still, I don't think I should spend another winter here. There's nothing wrong with you. I... I think I'm like my dad. I think you are too. No, I'm afraid that I'm like my dad. Something elegant. 